Okay, we're live now. And let's see who's here. Okay, I think we're ready to start. Okay. So hi everybody, welcome to our um, video on face painting hygiene and safety. I'm Beth McKinney with facepaint.com and we also have Blake Cabot here uh, today. And we're gonna be talking about things that we can do to keep our kit really clean. And hopefully not just with the COVID-19, but also with any kind of virus, we want to make sure that our kits are clean and hygienic, that we have systems set up so we never spread any germs, if at all possible, with face painting. And face painting tends to be a very close proximity activity, so we do have to take extra precautions as artists and be aware of the kids in the line, the guests in the line, if they're healthy or not, and have a well-child policy in in place and to be cleaning our supplies and our equipment thoroughly as we're using them and after we use them to make sure that we don't put anyone at risk. So today I've got my own kit here. I don't know if anybody has any questions starting out, but uh, let me know if you do. So I've got my own face painting kit, which is my craft and go. And I have a system that I've been setting up that I've started using, I already, already was using brush bath and two wells of water for rinsing, but with COVID-19 out there, I'm also adding 70% isopropyl alcohol to another one of my containers so that I'm going through this system to keep my brushes really clean. Um, alcohol is probably gonna be a little hard on them, but I think sacrificing a few brushes is not the end of the world and I can replace those. People are more important. So we want to make sure we're keeping them safe. So can you guys see my kit pretty well here? I think so. I think I think it's it okay. Okay. Yeah, if you guys so, have any um uh any questions or whatever, um please let me know and I'll pass them on to Beth. So what I have here are my four containers. The first container which you can see my hand is touching. This one has water and I use brush bath. There are other cleaners that are also available, but the reason I use brush bath specifically is that it's also a makeup remover. So because of that, it's very gentle for the skin. You wouldn't want to use any kind of soap that's going to be harsh in any way. So brush bath is really good for that. So I used it. And since I started using it, my brushes are much cleaner at the ends of events and during events. In the next well, even though I don't have any there right now, um, I would put isopropyl alcohol, 70%. The 70% is kind of important um, because of the water content, it doesn't evaporate as quickly and it also penetrates the cell wall better and is better about killing proteins. From what I understand, when you, once you get beyond 90%, um, it causes the proteins in a germ in a cell um, to kind of become dormant rather than being killed. So you actually want the percentage between 70 and 90%, but not over 90%. Um, this well is just water, and I would use that for actually rinsing my brush, getting anything off it that from the soap or from the rubbing alcohol. And then the last one is just clear water. And then I also have clear water in a spray bottle that I can spritz very lightly onto my paints. Um, my face paint. I don't use very much. This particular spritzer does not put too much on my paints. And I know some people are very against spritzing. Um, I have two spritzers. One just unloads water <laughs> a lot. So this one just gives me a very small amount. So I feel like it's a good way of, of doing that, of getting the face paint moistened without over bringing in too much water. So um, Lisa um, asked, um, yeah. uh, would you um, use alcohol on your brushes? I mean, so instead of yeah. dipping your uh, brush into water, dipping your brush into alcohol. Um, not to probably face paint a person, 
but for cleaning purposes. So what I'll do is I'll clean my brush in the soap. This one actually does have brush bath in it. And I also have several blotting paper towels. So I'll blot that on this. Then I would clean it in the rubbing alcohol and I'd really, you know, give it a few seconds in there. It is going to slow you down. You're not going to be able to do high volume very quickly with this. Then I would clean it there, blot it on this paper towel. Then I would rinse straight water to get off any residual rubbing alcohol, soap, blot. And then if I needed just plain water to take to the face paints, I'd use that for clear water. So that, that's my system for cleaning the brushes. Rubbing alcohol can be a little harder on the brushes, but when I'm done, I use master's brush soap to condition my brushes and that helps them last a little longer anyway, but, um, and then cleans them at the end as well. Um, the, I'd say the bigger difficulty is sponges. Artists that use one sponge for, per color need to probably change that to make sure that they are not going to take something from a child to the face paint and then back to the next child in line. Um, right now, what I would also suggest doing is possibly just foregoing sponges entirely, at least for a while. Um, and because of that, I was thinking about what um, Chris Alex said, she used an airbrush. So this is what I did. My last event for March was yesterday and I had all my face paint and I also had my airbrush kit set up. And I had this particular airbrush set up just for face painting because what you can do is you can take clean water and I'm going to mix it in a color that you can see. Uh, Beth, somebody asked, um, what about a rinse well with brush bath? Um, you could use that. I, I haven't experimented with them personally, so I don't know that much about them. Um, for this, I'm actually putting regular face paint in my cup or airbrush. Um, I know that it's supposed to flush it out, but I don't have a rinse well. So I can't um, give you a lot of information on that. Um, this is face paint, regular face paint. So instead of using a sponge, I could use that and it would give me a nice, really even base. So if you have mm -hmm. airbrushes, you could do that temporarily. So you're thinking airbrush instead of using brushes? Not in brushes, but instead of using sponges. Okay. I'd use just like if you're doing a skull where you have to do a whole lot of the face in white, you're going to want to do that with a sponge normally. But once you put the sponge in your face paint, you put it on the child, you're not going to want it to go back to the face paint again because right. it's already touched that child's face. So what you may want to do instead is retire that sponge, bring out a new sponge, and you could cut your sponges in smaller pieces, you know, if you wanted to for that. Um, for example, I cut mine down a little bit. You might even want to do it more. I cut my circles into quarters. Um, that's normal, but you might even want to cut them into eighths. So you can use just a small amount. But once it goes to the child's face, you don't want to go back to the face paint. Mm -hmm. So you either have to retire that sponge and take a new one, reload it if you still need extra, or you could um, really load it well and then spritz it a little bit with water to activate what's on the sponge um, to try to go back without having to go back to the face paint. But um, if, then you're going to have to make a decision. Do I wash the sponge or do I discard the sponge entirely? So in some countries, you're not allowed to wash sponges and reuse them. In some countries, you can wash the sponge and reuse. But if you're going to wash the sponge, you have to find a way to disinfect it. Right. So, a couple other uh, questions came in. Like, so what do you think the max, how to stay maximum clean if you're working on a big event? Um, I don't know if we're going to be having very many big events for a while. But um, so you might find what you're going to see are more small birthday parties, probably not any large events, at least for a few weeks, maybe not until even into the summer. Um, you just, you have to cut down on your speed so that you have time to disinfect. Um, that's the main thing. When I was using this yesterday, I went through the, the soapy water, 
blotted it, went into the rubbing alcohol, blotted it, went into the clean water, blotted it, went into the, the fresh water. Anytime I went from the child's face, I had to go back through that whole system. So again, for artists that leave paint on their brushes and then just, you know, wake it up a little bit, reconstitute, and then go right to the child's face, you're not going to be able to do that in this climate right now and preserve your face paint or keep from spreading anything, I think. Just, it's better to be safe than sorry. So you have to go through that. Questions came in. Um, uh, I think I pronounced this ace, but it could be ace. Um, uh, she uses a rinse well in the job and she sprays um, uh, split sponges with water to load. And then she uh, rinse well flushes the old water and refills with new. That's what it kind of does. And she asked the question, why would you just not wash them? Dawn dish soap is antibacterial. As long as you rinse it all out, it should be clean. Well, as long as I could be sure I wasn't taking it back to a child, any of it, then it might not be so bad. I, I don't use Dawn on my brushes because it's it's a harsh cleaner. Um, and I think it's hard on bristles, probably more so on, on non-synthetic, but the synthetic bristles, I think it'd still be kind of hard on them. Um, I just, some people are really sensitive to perfumes or chemicals. So I feel a little better with the brush bath because I feel like it's milder. Um, another soap that's considered somewhat mild would be um, baby shampoo. You know, the No Tears baby shampoo. I'd probably use that before I'd use Dawn. Um, you can oh, she, she, said, she said not brushes, sponges. She was talking about sponges. Oh, sponges. Okay, sponges. Um, if you use them, uh, use them in dish soap. Um, I usually wash mine by hand with detergent. Um, one thing I'm going to do now is also soak them after I've cleaned them thoroughly and gotten all the moisture out of them. Um, I'm probably going to soak them in rubbing alcohol. And then again, press all the liquid out of them, rinse them again, maybe even wash them again in soap to make sure any chemical is out of them. And then you know, press them again, get all the moisture out. It's going to be a much longer process for cleaning than I probably usually take. Um, but the rubbing alcohol is the step. If you can find it, that's the other problem. Right now, people are having trouble finding rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Um, yeah I have quite a stash. It. I have a lot of it because I'm an airbrush artist too. So I have, you know, I've got lots of containers and it's the 90% or 91%, but I can add some water to it too you know, get the ratio a little better for actual disinfection. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I have a lot of it, but, you know, and I, I'm not doing a lot of events right now. So I could use that for cleaning sponges. One thing you do not want to do is use denatured alcohol. That stuff is, it's got all kinds of warnings on it. If you use it for cleaning your airbrushes, that's fine, but you need to make sure that you're wearing gloves and you can't use that, you know, on anything that's going to go to a child. Mm -hmm. So... Another question came from uh, Tony. Um, she said, I always touch my own face or hair at events without thinking about it. So were you wearing a mask or do you suggest wearing a mask? These are what I wore yesterday. <laughs> These are nitrile gloves and I had them on both hands. Normally when I'm airbrushing, I use them anyway. So again, I had this already, but um, I would highly suggest ordering some nitrile gloves and wearing them. When you're wearing gloves, you're less likely to touch your face because you're very aware that something's on your hands. I'm also a kind of person that might, you know, brush my brush my forehead with my wrist or something, but I'm pretty careful. I almost never get sick anyway. So, um, so I'm cautious as an artist. I'm cautious when I'm working around kids and I'm very attentive to whether or not they're sick or not. But the nitrile gloves will help you stay aware of not touching your face, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it'll help. Mm -hmm. That's a good thought. Um, uh, Lisa uses seventh generation free and clear dish liquid on her, because mm -hmm. it has no dyes and frags. And, and Ace, yeah. Ace says um, it, the, that actually what she was talking about wasn't harsh at all. Um, oh, okay. She has a hyper, uh, very sensitive son, and um, it, it doesn't seem to cause any problems. So. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, good to know. Yeah. So I got a question for the group. Um, uh, hi, Mia. Um, what, you know, I presume everybody's canceling lots of events and, and your life is misery. Um, uh, but what are you doing to fill the time or how are you working to get income? Um, 
That's a anyway. really good question. So I don't know the answer to that one. Um, I, I, Ace asked another question. Uh, could you lightly spray alcohol on the paints at the end of your day? I wouldn't suggest that. I don't really think that it would be that effective. Um, it's one thing to take an object like a brush and immerse it in alcohol. It's another thing to spritz alcohol over something that's a porous surface. And, and face paint is makeup. It's really kind of porous. I don't, I have no information to give you on to, as to how effective that would be. It would take tests to find out, but I just, um, I just wouldn't suggest it. I don't think it's a great idea. I know some people do it. Um, I don't know if it would be effective. If I was really concerned, I'd retire the paint. If I thought, oh, I had somebody and I didn't catch something, then I would retire that paint. I carry spares with me just in case. But, um, and then I also just try to be really, really attentive. And if I'm really concerned, if I think that a brush has actually um, touched a child and then I notice something on their face that I didn't see right away, that brush is done. It's done for, for that event. It's just, I just put it away, I package it in plastic and I either retire it permanently or else I, you know, I decide whether it can be disinfected depending on what I think I detected in a child. So I'm just careful that way. And um, I try to, you know, another option for face paint, I know I've got my whole craft and go set up here, but Marin does have liquid face paints. I think facepaint.com carries them. Uh -huh. I tried some of them and you could always take a palette and just put the paint colors you need per event on that palette and then wash it when you're done. So that's um, something I think artists do when they do uh, hospital events where they might be dealing with someone with compromised immune system where you just squirt the paint in and it never sees anybody else. It just is for that person. So that's a possibility too if you're very concerned or if you have clients that are very concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So putting smaller amounts in a smaller palette, using it for an event, washing it out. So it's more expensive, but it will be more, um, more hygienic too. So you wash it out with just water or you let it dry or how do you wash it out? For sponges or for brushes? No, just at the end of an event. The paints. Oh, the paints? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if this system has been followed rigorously, no germs should be on the paints. Because okay. I went through the soap, I went through the rubbing alcohol, which is really what's going to disinfect. Then I rinsed in water and then I went to water. So I've gotten really stringent about this now. So, I mean, before it was soap, rinse and rinse, but now it's soap, rubbing alcohol, rinse and rinse. So to make it very, very hygienic. And I didn't use any sponges yesterday. I did everything with airbrush. It was either airbrush or brush. And I never used, I had my sponges with, but I just didn't use them at all. Um, Ace is thinking about doing powders and lollipops for bases. Um, and she just, she throws away the lollipops anyway, so. Yeah, so that's another, that's another good option. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, use the applicator, toss it, and they're, and then you're done with them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so, yeah, did the everybody's thinking of Ace, but she doesn't airbrush. Well, you know, you don't. Nobody, not everybody airbrushes. Not everybody does airbrush. I already had this. In fact, last year was my big investment year where I bought a lot of airbrush, and um, I've been using it anyway. And it came in handy at some events. That was my big investment year. Um, I'm thinking of still getting the Graftobian, the small Graftobian mm -hmm. and the airbrush. So I don't have to carry a full compressor and everything with me and have that for my face painting kit. Right. Um, a friend of mine, Michelle Trademan, that's what she has. And she let me look at her Graftobian, her smaller Graftobian compressor. And she, she has it with her when she's face painting and she'll use it like for whites to put stars and stencil stuff in her. Mm -hmm in her designs. So it's just a great little little compact kit that you can carry with your regular face painting stuff. So, and that would be a great thing to use instead of sponges. And I think it would put parents' minds at ease. Mm -hmm. So they would feel like, you know, they see the system, they see everything's clean. I'm gonna make a suggestion right now because I know there are face painters out there and their kit is like a disaster. This is not the time for that. This is, take this time and clean your kit. 
thoroughly and organize it and make it look clean. Parents are gonna be looking at that more than ever because while the kids are not high risk with this virus, kids usually have access to grandparents who may be more of a high risk for this virus. So now's a great time to clean your kit thoroughly and keep it that way during events. Uh, um, someone asked um, what kind of gloves again? These are nitrile gloves. I actually have a box right here. I will grab it. Um, um, hang on, let me put the my box. screen on. There we go. Um, actually, I was running low when this whole thing happened. Not right away. Can you see it? There we go. Right away, I ordered another box because I was almost out. My other box lasted a long time because I really use them more for, there are two ways I usually was using them. I use them when I'm airbrushing because otherwise my hands are a mess by the time I get done. And airbrush ink is harder to get off. Um, the other thing I do is I use them when I'm doing cold events outside, either in the spring or the fall, because it keeps moisture off your hands and that evaporation causes you to feel colder and then your hands go numb and you can't hold brushes. So I use them that time of year too. So these are a size medium. So I'm an average size woman and medium fit my hand really well. <laughs> look like. So if you put one on, that. And they're disposable and they're not like real uh, loose or anything. And um, they work great. So. And I got a box of like a hundred, I think. So, and it'll probably last me a while. I don't know how many events I'm gonna be having, but um, I like them really well, but they are non-latex. So they're for people that have latex issues, mm -hmm. safe using them. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, in the spirit of, I don't know, just uh, helping people get, by face paint and and uh try to think positive we we created a, a code for uh 10 percent off anything at facepaint.com and i'm sending you guys the link it's uh good for the week uh ends friday and uh think positive 10 is the coupon code so uh we also got a 30 positive. think positive 10 because yeah. this is a, obviously a, well, this, a challenging you know, time well, Blake, you were saying, you know, what are artists doing? Some of them, I've seen some posts for performers and this is this is their business. This is what they do. It's all they do. And they're like, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? And most people are being really understanding. Um, there are some questions about what do I do about retainers for events? That is going to be a personal choice for each um each performer. I only had, I think, two events cancel. The other one hadn't sent in their retainer yet. It was still in process. So um, their their date hadn't been totally solidified yet. And what I'm doing is I'm allowing them to not be, I'm allowing them to move that retainer back. I have the luxury of being able to do that. Not everybody does because I don't rely entirely on face painting for my entire income. Right. So it's it's a real challenge for anybody who's a full-time performer they have harder decisions to make whether they're able to do that or not because it's impacting not just us it's impacting everybody um so that's that's a personal decision you're going to have to make for your business whether to refund retainers or not um, my retainers for individuals are smaller than they are for corporate events which are larger events so even for the individuals, had I not chosen to refund the two retainers, um, actually, I'm still holding the retainers. They're just rescheduling later in the year. Mm -hmm. But um, so I didn't actually refund them. We just, I allowed them to be applied to other dates, but it's only $50 per each person in that case. It's, it's not a lot. So um, it didn't, for me, it didn't make a big difference, but for some people it, it will, especially with corporate events where you probably get at least 50%, you know, to hold the date. I mean, is anybody um, still doing, I mean, are, is anybody having events still days or is it just kind of all sort of stopped? You know, I think the thing that it's coming down to is in some states, the governors have banned events of certain sizes. Right. So, you know, what we're seeing is it depends on what state you're in. You may actually have events coming up or small birthday parties if you're in a state that's allowing that. 
Um, and if parents feel reasonably sure that you know nothing of this virus has infiltrated into their personal circle, they may still be having events. I think most large events have been canceled at this point. I don't know of any big ones. Yesterday was actually a semi-public event. Um, people did make reservations at a restaurant, but almost nobody was there. It was there were only a few families there. You know, I ended up repainting the same five kids over and over and over until they had tattoos everywhere, you know, but airbrush and traditional. So they had both, they ended up with, but um, that was it for me. Yeah. So. Uh, all, all, a says every all she's got a few things uh federal recommended is down to 25 said tricia yeah. um yeah all, all feathers large uh, events have been canceled birthday parties um or have been getting kind of extra precautions um says says uh heather um all the events for march have been canceled for ace uh yeah just well, April, but this may not be no, in the United States, for the most part, there is not a lot of regulation for face painting. So it's a good idea for us as an industry to self-regulate and to, you know, put down really stringent health um, policies for our own companies, because really all it's going to take is one really bad situation, highly publicized at this time to really damage our industry. So it's a good idea for, for us as performers to regulate ourselves, to make sure we've got a system in, in place that's gonna keep our kit clean, that our kit looks clean, that it is, it is not just clean, but disinfected. And by doing that, we're gonna help our industry and we're gonna keep, we're also gonna keep ourselves and our, our clients healthy. So it's important. Uh, Heather said she was doing temporary tattoos, crazy hair, stickers, etc. So that's yeah. a, another way of going, well, rather than face painting. Yeah. Um, less contact with all those. Um, Lisa says in Pennsylvania, there can be no vents over 10 people. So yeah. that cuts out Pennsylvania, oh. unless you have eight, nine people. No, I actually heard, and don't quote me on this, I heard one state was talking about closing the roads. I think that's a terrible idea because there are people that need to get places. Um, and so I'm hoping nobody does that, goes to that extreme. Um, I'm not even gonna say what state it was. It's all rumor and I hope it doesn't happen because that's when people do start to panic and I'm a little more concerned about that. Um, during events, I would recommend, because it, we're, we have to be in this for the long term. For the rest of this year, I would recommend, if you don't just do it all the time anyway, post a well child policy at your events. I know there are people that want their kids to be painted so badly that they'll fudge the rules. Just don't, just don't. I've had kids cry when I turn them away and I've been really gentle with them and just very kind in my tone towards them. And, you know, bring little toys you know, the kind of tattoos they can apply themselves, something like stickers, so that if they feel disappointed, here, I have something special for you, you know, and that you can give them, but, you know, enforce your well child policies. Um, I've seen artists who have suggested that guests hand sanitize before they get into the chair. I'd say that's a really good idea. I have a chair cover, which I launder between events. I would do that as well. I'm thinking of making a couple of spheres so that I can switch them out. I've got two, but just making some new ones. Um, you might consider having parents wipe down a child's face if you are gonna continue face painting before they're face painted. I'd suggest starting at the forehead and going down toward the chin because more stuff is probably gonna be around the mouth. I'd go down if you do that or you know, suggest to the parent, we're just doing arm face painting. That's all we're doing. We're not doing faces, we're just doing arms swab their arm with rubbing alcohol, then paint it, and then go through your whole system for cleaning your brushes. So you could do that as well. Um, do you uh, really Heather, Heather agrees with you. Yeah. She likes that policy a lot. She says the well child policies are very helpful. Yeah, and we do have them up on the 411 group. Um, one of the members uh, was so nice. She helped translate it into Spanish. So we have them in English and Spanish right now. Okay. Um, uh, do you have that link or well, I'll go find that link. Um, and then um, 
And the other thing she suggested doing was uh, she put a video on her website about how her, what her cleaning practices are to right. reassure parents, which I think is a great idea. That uh, is a great idea because parents don't really know. I mean, everybody's unsure right now. And this is a brand new thing that we're all dealing with simultaneously. That's a great idea. Put up a video, encourage parents, you know, that they understand that you're doing what you can do. Um, be alert, listen to the line. I did have a child come in yesterday and I could hear them coughing and I'm like, it could be allergies, but I have no way of knowing that. I would not paint the child. They didn't actually come up and ask to be painted, but if they had, I would have turned them down just on hearing a kind of a loose sounding cough. Um, make sure you're washing your hands in addition to using hand sanitizer because washing is actually more effective. So I would definitely do that. Um, and um, uh, one person suggested keeping their kit covered while they're working. That's actually a good idea. I would also recommend turning the chair so it faces away from your kit. So the child isn't like looking right at your kit where they can cough. You know, even if they're not sick, it's just a good idea to position them so that they don't face your face paint. So uh, just Tony, Tony uses antibacterial wipes, uh, which she wipes down the table and a chair before she starts. Yep, that's um, a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, you can always just do arm painting. That's easy enough. I mean, you know, that, that's less on the face and therefore less. Arms can easily be cleaned with rubbing alcohol. I do that anyway for if you're doing henna, if you're doing... Um, airbrush tattoos you probably already have you probably already have the equipment the little squirty thing that you push down you get your rubbing alcohol and you clean the arm before you do the or glitter tattoos I, I use rubbing alcohol all the time just for those things to clean the arm to get rid of the oil so that those things will last longer so if you're already doing that that's just apply it to face painting mm -hmm. um, here's here's one thing I, I had these things written down but if you feel unwell, just get a, get a replacement. It's not worth the money <laughs> to spread anything. It's probably not COVID-19, but if you don't feel well, just get someone else to replace you for events. And here's a link to the um, uh, Facebook group that Beth's mentioning. So we keep this group up and this is uh, Face Painting 411. It's got all sorts of information about how to learn how to face paint and all the rest of it. And uh, here you go. And, and it's we, course free. We actually have a current contest right now. And if you've got all this spare time, <laughs> you could yeah. join the contest. It's for, and because now, now it looks like they've canceled all these basketball games, but our contest was basketball mask designs. So that's, that's something you could do with your spare creative time right now. Exactly. And you can see why you can watch webinars because uh, we have, uh, Kirsten Olamon doing dinosaur face painting on Wednesday. That's going to be fun. That's, that's going to be fun. And we got the uh, lovely Pam Kinneberg on March 30th. Um, probably need to schedule something between now and then. Uh, I was thinking I was going to be traveling sometime in March. Well, that's not going to happen this time. And then we're going to have Jacqueline Ho on On the Job Glitter from Vivid Glitters. So it should be a kind of good thing to do. Um, does anybody else uh, have any questions? I, I don't know. It seems like it's uh, a lot of things. Okay, so real, summarize it. So what they should, what the what they should shouldn't do. Um, one thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't clean my sponges with bleach. Um, I would not do that. If you're going to disinfect them, I have heard people who, after they wash them while they're damp, microwave them using the heat to try to disinfect them further. So um, I have not personally tried that, but rubbing alcohol is something that we actually use on our skin anyway. So that's really safe as far as disinfecting. If you can get a hold of it for disinfecting after you've cleaned the sponges, disinfect with the rubbing alcohol. And then I would clean them again and let them dry through or run them through your dryer till they're dry. Okay, so when you're setting up your kit, what do you what do you do in this environment? You're cleaning. I've heard sort of cleaning the chairs, cleaning the table, um, wiping those down with antibacterials. Um, you set up your kit. You lay out your alcohol, your water, um, and then and and then you put on your gloves, right? Yeah, I have everything set up first. Since I use a craft and go, I bring my surface with me. So I can clean it between events and know that it's just clean. Nothing's gonna touch it, I close the lid, it's good to go. 
um, for the next event. So, um, but once I have everything set up, then I put my gloves on and I start bringing people over. Um, another thing is with the personal distance right now, a lot of times kids will crowd up behind you. You definitely want to move them back or move guests back mm -hmm. and not have them crowd so much so that they're not standing right at your kit. So again, if somebody coughs, you don't want them to cough on the face paint. You want them to be back. So try to position your kit in such a way that the line isn't near it so that they're away from it. I would do that too. Okay. And you wouldn't, um, um, yeah, someone said uh, ovens work really well to clean sponges. And then so in between, just show everybody your routine in case they join late of, of how you clean the brushes in between okay. kids. So what I do um, between children, I'll have one well with brush bath and water, one container. And the reason, I know this, everyone's looking at this thinking, that does not look like official face painting equipment. That's kind of an odd jar. It's just a glass jar. But the reason I use this is that when I use the little ring, it's waterproof, it's watertight. So I could put alcohol in here and not, I'm pretty sure it won't seep out on my kit. I always carry things upright anyway, but it's not gonna get out. So, um, and also because this has this little lid, alcohol evaporates. So when I'm not using it, I just leave the lid on it and I pull it off. So after I go through brush bath, blot, then I clean with the rubbing alcohol, blot my brush, go into the rinse water, blot my brush. And I have a blotter for each section. And then this is clear water if I need to transfer transfer water into any of the colors. Although I'll probably just use my squirt bottle. So okay. that's the system I have. And then instead of using a sponge, using um, a small oh, top feed airbrush. And so if you have one of these, great time to make use of it. And that way I can spread the color. It really should give you an excellent um, distribution of whatever you're using. You can actually put regular face paint in here, just mix it up, dribble it in and use it. Mm -hmm. So instead of using Perfect. the sponge, it's gonna take a little more time for sure, this system, but uh, it should be really effective. Okay. Okay, well, thank you everybody. Um, oh, uh, where did you get the disposable tumblers for water? Sagitha asked. Uh, these are not disposable, but they do compress, but they are cleanable. So I clean these. Um, this is actually, this used to be for laundry detergent, but it's just a nice size for water. So I use it for my clean water, but these are, I can't turn them upside down to look at them. Let me look. Faber-Castell and they are silicone and plastic and they compress. So you can squish them down after you empty them out. Mm -hmm. So, but they can be cleaned with rubbing alcohol and soap. So, and this is just a glass jar. Um, you may, you know, some people may want to use either stainless steel or glass and just run everything through their dishwasher when they're done, just mm -hmm. to disinfect that way, the option. Okay. And what brand of airbrush was that? Some uh, Heather asked. This, one, this is an Iwata top feed. If you get the small, um, the small Graftobian with the, the little compressor, I think it comes with a Graftobian airbrush. I think it with, does. With the little top feed cup. So those are really nice. And then uh, Chris Alex had that other one that she found on Amazon. I have never purchased those or tried them, but that actually comes, it's like a rechargeable base so that you don't have to carry a compressor with. So that's another option. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sagitha didn't understand what you were talking about with airbrush or maybe she just missed it. So you oh, were just okay. saying, so you could put paint in the airbrush. So what I'll thing. do is I'll take some water and I'll mix it in with the face paint and then I've got it on my brush and then I can just scrape that in to the cup. So just work in enough water that, you know, the product is, is mixed up with the water well. I'm just gonna lay this brush aside for now. And then let me grab my airbrush hose. Okay, so I've got um, quick disconnect hook it up to my airbrush and I'll use the other side of my paper towel. And this is just regular face paint. It's just mixed up with water and I poured it into the cup. Mm -hmm. so that, and you can see that. Yep, that makes and, total sense. Yeah, and so I'm using regular face paint. I didn't have to buy any airbrush paint. It just washes up with water 
and it's just a way of applying it rather than a sponge because then I don't touch anybody. I'm right. putting those colors out there. Right. So that's a, it's an option to be okay. really clean. That, well, that's good. It's always good to be clean. As a lot of people have mentioned, yeah. this is the kind of practice we should probably do, be doing anyway as artists. And so it seems to make that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, well, thank you very much, Beth. Really appreciate it. Sure. Uh, I know I asked you to do this at the last possible minute and to pull this all together. Uh, so, uh, oh, uh, they want to know the name of the, it was an Awada uh, airbrush system, I believe. Oh, yeah. This is an Awada Eclipse. Actually, sorry, this is an Awada Revolution. Sorry. I do have eclipses also. I actually like the eclipses because of the way they come apart and I can actually pull the needle out the front. Um, the Revolution's a little bit different. Yeah, let's see if I can pull it apart here. Let's see. But the back end looks very much similar to it. It's just um, the eclipse is a little different. But um, the revolution is great gun too. I have one of these and I have a bunch of the water e uh, eclipses. One revolution and a bunch of eclipses. So. Okay. But the pot feeds are great for this purpose. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And have a good evening. And uh, stay safe. Bye-bye. And I will and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Uh, this did in two days. Okay. Talk to you later. Thank you very much, Beth. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.